It's our story. Colleen Starkloff, St. Louis, Missouri. Well, uh, uh, Laughter with Ed was... Um, laughter with Ed was pretty commonplace. And I, I don't know, we, we laughed about a lot of things, but we also... Um, I remember I laughed when he asked me the question about um, what Max was like because we would go to meetings together and Max is um, Max is a very quiet, um, powerful, um, intellectual and, and contemplative kind of person. So Max isn't the loudest one in a meeting. Max says something when he has something to say. Now, I get into a meeting and I have lots to say and I say it. And so one day we were at a hotel in Washington and uh, I was sitting on the floor out in a hallway. I don't, and Ed came along and he's, we started talking and um, he said, I want to ask you something. And I said, what's that? And he goes, he goes, I always hear you talking at meetings, but I don't hear Max very often. And he was very curious about what Max's thoughts were and, and what, you know, why was he so quiet? And I said, well, Ed, I said, for one thing, you're always talking, so it's hard to get a word in edgewise. You never shut up. And secondly, if Max has something to say, he'll say it. Um, and, I, and he said, and I said, and I'm always talking. I said, you and I are two peas in a pod, just like a lot of people who go into meetings and have a lot to say. But I said, just, just watch. When he has something to say, he'll say it. And it won't be light. It'll be profound, and it'll be worth thinking about. And he said, oh, OK. We, it, it, was, it was probably around the same time that we were, that day or another day or another time, I can't remember exactly. But um, we used to sit around and talk about one of the things that frustrated me, and that was uh, the role of people who are not disabled in the movement. And it, it used to bother me because sometimes people would say, you know, um, this is a meeting for disabled people, and they're the only ones who should speak. And it didn't happen often, but it happened a time or two. And I was very committed to the principles of what independent living was all about. Um, I was educated as a physical therapist, but I didn't learn anything in PT school about how people with disabilities really live after they leave the environment of hospital and rehab. And I learned that through my husband and through friends who I met who have disabilities. And so I was quite fascinated with the whole concept of how important it was that people with disabilities had an opportunity to live independently and how important it was that people with disabilities were taken seriously and respected for who they were and what they stood for. And Ed was all about that. It was easy, it was easy very quickly to understand that he was all about independence and dignity and self-respect. That came across very quickly with him. Uh, but I, I said, you know, it frustrates me uh, that people say to me that this is a movement all about people with disabilities. And he said to me, don't you ever stop talking, don't you ever stop participating, don't you ever stop contributing because you have a lot to offer. He said, independence is really about interdependence. All of us need each other and none of us does anything truly alone. And he said, quite frankly, where would I be without non-disabled attendants to help me out? And I said, right, Ed. How come they don't get that? And he said, don't ever stop what you're doing. And that was, um, that was a real uh, encouragement and an inspiration to me. So I never stopped. The It's Our Story Project is a national effort to make disability history public and accessible. Visit us at www.itsourstory.org or on the It's Our Story Project YouTube channel.